I think my goal for my paintings in general is to kind of paint as if I was an artist on a particular plane looking at what I'm painting in real life. So I want my work to kind of have the quality of a plein air painter where they're sitting in a location and painting what they're seeing. I want realism, I want believability, but I also want to make the viewer feel like they're sitting on that plane looking at this image and this is what an artist on that plane would have created. The most satisfying thing for me is to tell a good story. What's behind this corner that he's created, you know, in, in this composition? What is this character going to do next? I'll always imagine the viewer as within the scene, like walking around in the scene. What would they see? What would they experience? For me, it's really getting the story out there. That's the most important thing. I'm really, at heart, a storyteller. So this is my studio slash playroom for my kids. Um, we had to kind of divide it up this way because I didn't need all this space. So I usually step over the gate here and uh, this, is, this is where I work. Um, I have my easel set up. My I feel like my work in magic has been a story of evolution where when I first started, I had an idea about what I wanted to accomplish, but I think my problem was I was thinking too much. Like I was looking at other magic artists and seeing what they did. Uh, Steve Prescott, his draftsmanship, and Matt Stewart, his attention to detail. Chris Ron, of course, he has... It looked more like I was trying to imitate the magic vibe. And so I kind of think of the first start of my career as trying to like find my voice but not really finding it. I took a break from magic around the time of the cons block and came back and started doing work that I thought was really good. But it still didn't feel like me. But now I've gotten into the point where I can kind of play with texture a little bit. I can kind of let things be a little bit unfinished and a little bit rough can see my thought process and doing the bottom layer first and then a layer over that and then a layer over that and that kind of building up of texture tells a story of how I created the piece and I think that's really the core of it. That little bit of a struggle comes through in the work where it gives a real tactile feeling to the painting itself but also tells a story about how I got there. So the way I'd start is by doing the basic outline ratio of a magic card and then maybe this laughing goblin is really big in the frame and he's got his big nose here and he's laughing real loud and then in front of him he's got this gross knife that he's holding. It's an emotional wave for me personally. Uh, the most excited I get is right at the beginning. You can envision the kind of painting it's going to be but it hasn't yet come into fruition. So let's say I found a composition that I like what I'll do is I'll take a digital photo of the thumbnail sketch here and I'll transfer it into um, my tablet and do the rest of the sketching digitally. Looking at one of my finished paintings is much different than looking at a painting that I'm trying to finish. Because if I'm trying to finish a piece, everything is wrong. But if the painting is finished, then everything is all right. It's, it looks pretty good, you know? And you, you kind of need that distance of time um, to kind of have that perspective to say, okay, maybe everything isn't exactly how I want it, but it's still pretty good. What do you want me to say? What's the best thing about school? Draw. Drawing things? What do you like to draw the best? Dragons and dinosaurs and all different kinds of monsters. Mimi. Mimi. And when he was probably three, he took a, we had a clipboard and he took it everywhere we went. He had it in the car all the time. And as soon as we would experience something, we'd go to a carnival, he had to come home and draw it. He, he 
He would literally ask me, you know, what should I draw next? He understood perspective, which, of course, I learned about in college. I didn't even take high school art courses. But then I went to art school, but I could see very early on that, you know, he was, he was going to outpace me. He was valedictorian of his high school, and the principal said to me, you're going to let Ryan be an artist? I'm like, I'm not letting him be an artist. That's who Ryan is. Ryan is an artist. I think the principal was rather just surprised that we wouldn't be forcing him to be an engineer or, or whatever because he was, you know, AP calculus, AP physics, and, you know. But life's too short, Ryan. If that's your passion, go for it. Do it. I'm not really sure what attracted me to become an artist. I feel like drawing has kind of always been with me. Growing up, I did a lot of activities, but drawing was kind of like the one constant. I think that was kind of an effort to capture the world almost so that the, the, I could bring the world to me through my pictures, you know? There you go. Hey, look at that. Look at that. That's so good. So being married to an artist from my perspective, you know, seeing what he does is sort of, especially with the kids, I don't get to see it a lot. I'll see maybe the beginning of a painting and then I'll see the middle section and have no idea what happened in between. A lot of times I'll go into a studio and say, oh, that painting looks like it's almost done. And he'll say, oh, it's definitely not. It's going to be several more days. Like that. Like that. Ryan is always trying to encourage the kids to be artistic. When Lena was born, probably by the time she was a year old, she was holding a pen the right way and drawing, and so Ryan was always trying to focus his time um, with her on activities where she could draw or paint, and I think he sees a lot of himself in her. I think being a freelance illustrator kind of has the same mindset as being a parent um, because there's like a never-ending list of things to do. Like when you lay your head on the pillow at night, um, you're never really sure you've done the best job that you could have done and you're pretty well convinced that other people are doing it better, but you just have to keep doing the job that you have and doing it the best way you can. and. Um, at the end of the day, you have these like wonderful little creations that you brought into the world, and that's something that's really something that I'm really proud of. <laughs>